Okay. Hello, anyone out there in the internet land watching us tonight. This is the Lud Down Under Hangout. And tonight we are discussing my pick, which is All Systems Red by Martha Wells. And that's a really awful view of the cover, but sorry, that's all I had. <laughs> um, which is the first book in the Murderbot series, which, you know, that name. <laughs> One of the first things that caught my attention when people were talking about it. So um, let's start off with general opinions and thoughts of it. Um, Kim, do you want to go first? I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I was going to say the only thing I didn't like was how short it was, but I think it was the perfect length for the story that she was telling. Um, can't wait till the others are out. I was so disappointed they weren't out already. I know. <laughs> Number two was supposed to be out and then they pushed it back, bastards. <laughs> well, hopefully that means they're making it even better. Yeah. Um, I really love the story and the fact that it um, makes you think about what life would be like because I don't think there's that many stories that talk about um, robots that are part, well, not many that I've read where they're part genetic material and part cyber, cybernetic, yeah. uh, cyborg mm. sort of style. Um, and it was quite interesting and I really liked it. And yeah, that's all I've got to say for now. Go into details later. Cool. Matt? Oh, that's basically my thing too. I, the only reason I didn't give it five stars is because it was too short. <laughs> I, need, I needed it to be longer to give it an extra star. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I really liked it. Um, had lots of good feels from this book. Um, and I too am also waiting for the next ones to come out now. I, I had thought they might have been out, but apparently not. No, yeah, I did too. I was like, I'll get to them, and then I didn't know they were out because yeah. they all came up as suggested ones on my Kindle mm. after I finished. And I was like, oh, good, there's lots of others, and yeah, mm, that's a bit sad. no pre order only. <laughs> Yeah. The reason they're coming up to like for a lot of people is they, they full on went into marketing it's coming out in January type stuff. That was what was going on and then they pushed it back because it was so popular. Anyway, Kirsten. Mm -hmm. right. I really enjoyed it too. Um, I was surprised actually because I don't know, maybe it was the murder bot thing. I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be my thing. But I really, really liked it. I really liked the, the main character particularly um, and I liked the story and I found it was not quite fast paced. It didn't take me very long to read and I'll go, yeah, again, I'll go into more detail later, but, yeah, I really liked it. Hmm. Sarah? Yeah, I, I get five stars, which um, is, means that I'm going to go around and tell everybody I know to read this, which is why mm -hmm. I give things five stars, because mm. uh, I really thought it was such... The other thing is I actually thought it was such a great length, and, again, five stars, because it's the kind of thing where I could tell someone, it's a two-hour read, like, seriously. If you yeah. want to know what kind of things I'm into, AI, the kind of the bigger questions in science fiction... It was fucking funny as well. Murderbot was hilarious. Like, yeah. and, and also, you know, um, I like the way sometimes that um, other creatures, be they AI or aliens, can often make commentary on when people aren't neurologically typical. I really like that about Murderbot um, and how Murderbot was like, I, d I don't want to be social. I just want to watch my shows. Like, and I loved it. So, um, yeah. I'm very much the same. I only went four stars because I kind of felt like it sort of jumped at the end and I felt like it really was written like there was more and then it was just done. Yeah, and I was I've like, that was the only reason and I'll probably end up going back and giving it five stars once the new the next one comes out. It's just that I was sort of like, oh, come on. There was obviously meant to be more there. <laughs> Matt will tell you why I, I stopped and said, oh, I have a theory and I'm going to tell you out loud because... Um, I, you won't believe me if, if I'm right that I knew it ahead of time and then it was completely wrong theory. <laughs> but, I was like, but I was like, I did expect there to be more of a convoluted way of winning at the end, I guess. Because, uh, like, the percentages that was tracking at the bottom had quite a bit more to go still on mine and I was like, oh, no, there's still a bit more to come. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that made it a bad story or that it wasn't finished off or anything. It's just it's just the typical thing that happens in a shorter story in that, it, um, especially one that's got a really good plot, you're always left wanting more. Like that's yeah. short stories for you like this. So yeah. many I'm always like, like God, right? Oh, but that's what I'm this, – <laughs> this comes from the – did you guys know about the, the tour novella stuff that they're doing? 
No, until yeah. I read it at the end yeah. of the book saying, this is what we're up to. Yeah. <laughs> see, I That's where Binti that. oh, that um, bit. Sorry, Kim? I missed that bit. <laughs> oh, basically, Tor is, is got a... I know a, who Tor are. Yeah. So they've yeah. had an initiative for about a year now where they're trying to publish more books that are at this sort of mid-length. They're not short stories. They're not novels. They're novellas. And mm -hmm. so they're this sort of length where they're about oh, 150 sometimes a little bit closer to the hundred, sometimes a bit higher in the, um, in the hundreds pages long. But, yeah, sort of that um, length. And I really think it's very good because there's so many authors out there that have great ideas but that aren't, like, fully needing a whole um, novel to tell the story. So It's also yeah, an opportunity for them to kind of test the waters without getting sucked into a multi-book contract for something that doesn't yeah. end up working out. Mm, yeah. The so there's thing, not that thing where often, they're padding out the story to make it into a novel and then ruining it by doing that. Mm. The mm. only thing so, that made me sad, because I love this one so much, I was like, oh, maybe I wouldn't mind buying this one to put on the shelves. And it cost as much as a full novel. And I was like, oh, I feel bad mm. people judging that. But at the same they might When they all come out, they might release them as like a collector's series. So maybe just yeah. hold them tough yeah. and then you'll be able to buy them like beautifully in a box set yeah. or something yeah that that's what i had a problem i saw the cost and i'm like well, maybe i'll wait till later when more are out maybe they'll do a, like a pack or something yeah the other thing I also like include oh sorry no you're right i was just going to say uh, some other authors like um dean Kuntz and mm -hmm. um a couple other ones like they'll often have uh, a tie-in novella or a short story or something that they've done in advance of the book as part of the physical book, just included in in the like the next mm -hmm. real book, anyway. Yeah, they so might not even need to wait for a collection; just the first one to come out, and mm. might have it in there. Well, the other thing I told myself too is I was like, "You have technically already bought it, and it's on your Kindle, and you paid yeah. a fair amount of money for that, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and maybe you should yeah. just let your Kindle books be your Kindle books sometimes." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, when you love a book so much, when you like giving it four or five stars, sometimes you just want to copy I know. so you can see it there. <laughs> yeah, so I love that. I'm with you on that. I know. Maybe if they publish them together, anyway. All right. Shall we talk about Murderbot? Sure. I was thinking maybe we should talk about Murderbot's name first since it's mm. rather an important factor about why Murderbot named itself that. It is its, right, or yeah. its gender. Yeah, it's and I it never, I never identified its gender. I no. I reading it as a woman no I, matter how much I, I tried not to. Yeah, maybe yeah. I. <laughs> I, I. I and I was like, I know that it's, it's a gender neutral, like it's very specifically spelt out that, it has no gender, but I kept thinking of it as a she, and I don't know whether that's because the author is female and she had a very female sounding voice to my ears, but um, mm. yes, the brain, I suppose. But it, yeah, yeah, even that doesn't actually mean anything in the real world. No. So it's just no. one of those no. things that we sometimes. I also, think. it must have some gender because it couldn't have blended in as well as it did at the end, mm. if, unless gender neutrality, you know being um sorry my mind's gone because i've had too much and well, maybe, it, maybe androgynous it thank you has... being more androgynous was fashionable by that time well um, the thing is is that there's people today who walk around and you're like i'm actually not sure if that's a guy or a girl mm. and that could be yeah. completely possible right so yeah um so I guess it depends on the environment they probably want it to fit in yeah as well as possible but if it's an environment where a lot of people look androgynous they'd probably yeah. just make it androgynous just to be i think i was just really affected I, the reason i know the reason i kept thinking of murderbot as a female or female looking or voice or whatever is just simply because of the fact it was a sick unit like it had armor that it had um like a mech had a mech suit um, and so I keep thinking, so there was two reasons. There was think Bob, of Bobby. Bobby, <laughs> number yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And yeah. number two was the series that I really love um, where she's uh, like working on a ship. Yes, I know the one you're talking about. Or something, the queen and the pawn and the pawn of prophecy was one. I know the one, the series you're talking about, but yeah. I was thinking of her too. Um, you know, and it turns out the guy that she really likes is like part alien or something or affected, like he's been affected by something or, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I kept thinking of her because she was like, she's like a, um, a, uh, 
Yeah, now I'm curious. What is this book? I want to read it. Oh, <laughs> I need oh, to I it. read it. It's really good. It's a three book series, and it's yeah, so we read good. It. We read it. We read the first one, and then I... oh, yeah, Fortune's Porn. I know yes, I read yes, it. I yes, own I it. It had a chess theme. I was like, I was like, Queen Porn. I know it's something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have realized when you said Porter Prophecies when it really. Threw I'm like, no, that's the David Eddings one, isn't it? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. But it had porn in its title. That's why. Yeah, no, yeah, like, you're right there. I just I couldn't think of any other book like that. I was like, yeah. what did it do? Yeah. So yeah. So those are the two reasons. Is because I've I've come across really strong. Um, uh, what do you call them? What do you call hired swords? There's a name for them. Mercenaries. Mercenaries, Mercenaries you know, yeah. mech suits, mm. security detail. So that's that's the reason is we've had two very strong female characters in different media and I was like, I know I shouldn't do it, but I can't help it. I keep imagining like a blend of Bobby and the character from from uh, mm -hmm. porn. So that's the reason. I'd be interested to know someone who hasn't in ingested that media, whether they'd think of it the same way. I've well, seen a review on Goodreads of somebody that said they read it as female as well. Yeah. Um, I think so that just because they, they might actually be presenting as female to everybody else anyway. The important thing was though, that they were andro androgynous in their feelings and stuff. Mm. So we might have been reading them as female because others were seeing female even if Motorbot didn't feel that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was also possibly the way the females are in the, in the, um, the unit reacted to Murderbot. You know, Arata was very concerned um, over C2, who yeah. over C, I went back, I thought, I was like, I was pretty sure over C was female. By the way, I had to sit there and work. I, I, I got really confused with the names. Like five I was okay with, but seven I was like, there's too, too many, too, too many, too many. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> to keep track of everybody. There was, and there was a couple I was fine with and I knew who they were, but the others yeah. I just sort I of like, became Mensa, characters. Got, I'm down. Mensa's down. Good. Yeah. And then I had to keep going, who got attacked? Which one was uh, it? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I always remember the one that got attacked, Mensa, and the one who was augmented, the augmented human. Who didn't trust Murderbot. Yes. Um, Those were the three that always stuck out yeah. to me. And then there was Pin Lee, who I really liked. Yeah. Um, and then there was Ov Oversee and... Uh, Arada, who I think were a gay couple, mm, mm. and then their best friend was Rathi. Yep. Yes. So it took. I, I actually sat there and put the Kindle down and went, "Okay, who's who?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you did that. I, mean, I couldn't even name any of them apart from oh, that. No, I, I, that. I was just thinking out. you're doing real well because I can't remember any yeah. of them. And I actually think it's the way that the females on board reacted to Murderbot. Like they were very concerned about it. Mm. Um, you know, like Arata would sit and held, held Murderbot. Like I think there was kind of a feminine concern that possibly I read as the way that females do get concerned about each other. Yeah. Um, that possibly I read in the way that the males on board, like one of them was very mistrusting, um, mm -hmm. weren't like even Mensa, who is female, was very much like, you know, I don't know. There was just maybe that's again what I was reading into it, putting my own experiences and biases onto this world and character and the way definitely the females are reacting. Like Rathi did not react in the same way any of the females did. Um, Garanthan didn't trust it. And then Volescu kind of went, hey, thanks for helping me out there. You know, I really appreciate it. You know, I was losing a little, you know. For me, it was more about like how everyone sort of deferred to the ladies in terms of how we should, how they should treat Murderbot. Like there was disagreements about how they should be talking about it, but in the end they deferred to the ladies. And that tends to suggest to me, even though it probably shouldn't, that they did that because Murderbot pre presented at least visually as female, female and so yeah. they sort of assumed that that was the right decision from that side. Yeah. It's funny because I couldn't have if I couldn't have put my finger on why I I read that the, the character as female but mm. I just from the very beginning I read the character as female mm. before yes, I was mm -hmm. given any information about mm. the fact that they were gender neutral. Yeah. Mm. I think like, it may have at been the time, I just assumed the language was, used and that's all I can think of. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah, like even going when when it was spelled out that no, it's not female, it's gender neutral, I was like, oh, wonder what it was that made me think it was female and I couldn't really articulate or put my finger on what it was. Yeah. Maybe it's just something as simple. Just me. No, but I sat there and like pondered my own head in it and went, why do I think this? 
And then mm. those were the reasons I came up with was because I'd met great, strong, female mercenary, next to type characters. Yeah. And two, the way every other female reacted to it um, mm. in a way that yeah. females tend to support one another. Um, the other thing I was thinking was maybe the fact that there's a great big extremely feminine n name of the author on the cover right above the head of the character. Possible. Yeah, but I read on a Kindle, so, you know, I didn't see the cover. <laughs> I always maybe, think I, start, I didn't... start back at the cover on the Kindle. I'm yeah, like, me too. I like to there. see the cover. Don't... Go to the proper first page. When I, I want to return it back to the beginning after I've finished and I go back to the beginning, I'm like, no, not page one, <laughs> the cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's definitely biases. I don't yeah. know whether that the author had an effect. Um, mm. I definitely know consuming, I know consuming um, the other things like Bobby and the, 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 the mercenary from fortune's yeah. porn definitely affected me like that was there was no way mm. no doubt about that yeah so, yeah um that may I, I i reckon that probably colored my biases from the beginning um i did i really enjoyed the other characters and again what i thought about like it took me ages to get to know them like in a way that i thought was really clever because i actually thought the way that murderbot never described what they looked like because that isn't important to murderbot mm -hmm. and yep. Because of that, that's one of the reasons I found it so difficult to remember who was who. Yeah, because oh, there was too. no time really spent discussing it. Yeah, well, never discussed it. it what mm. you worked out was how they reacted to Murderbot or each other, the way yeah. they like, and that's so that's why I really, you know, I was thinking about it. Is that why did it take me so long to work out who was who? Because I was like, am I being, is it the characters' names because they are, you know, more Indian origin and I'm not, great, you know, great with that? And I was like, no, that's not it. And I realised it's because usually you have something visual, you know, the authors spend a lot of time, you know, painting a scene of what someone looks like and how their mannerisms are. But to Murderbot, which I think was so clever, Murderbot doesn't care about any of that. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't. She doesn't even know that, you know. That, well, the, I like the, the character that was the, the political leader and she's like, what? I don't know. I only watch <laughs> like dramas. I don't know politics from wherever you're from. Like, yeah, um, doesn't, doesn't, I didn't figure into I didn't the job. info packet. I was watching TV. I've just got to keep you alive. What else does anything else matter? Um, <laughs> I thought, though, that was interesting, though, that the way Murderbot did interact with the characters, like do the run through, was by talking about their relationship and interaction yeah. with each other. Yeah. Mm. And I thought that was fantastic because I was like, and that's yeah, what we're... I had to be going back and rereading to remember who people were. Mm. I reread that, but I kept going, and I could So who's with Oversea? All right, okay, right. And who's right? <laughs> That's what yeah. I keep working out what their relationships were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that that made sense, right? Because Murder, what Murderbot was interested in was watching relationships in the TV shows and stuff. Yeah. And the reason that it had become attached to these people was because it was enjoying their interactions. And mm -hmm. and while it didn't want to interact with them, it enjoyed watching them interact. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fast forward to sex scenes like, wow. That was yeah. that's not interesting to me. <laughs> that was so good. I love that. <laughs> little, little touches like that. Mm. Um, but it, its actual name, Murderbot, because it had, had killed um, its last, was it its last gig or a previous gig? A previous gig. I don't know if it was its last gig. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It was the last one, but yeah. Yeah, um, and it, it um, decided to take that name for itself. Um, as sort of, I don't know, like, is that sort of as a, a payment for having done it? Is it a redemption thing? Why would you call yourself such a thing? <laughs> a reminder? Mm. Yeah, I took it almost as like a, a guilt thing. That, that I wonder it, you know, if, like, if you somewhere it written. Sorry, yeah, you go. I was just going to say, like, it, it, it sort of wasn't programmed to feel guilt, but there was something there that it was like... Mm. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder if it had picked it up from someone who was involved around that previous <laughs> job mm. and they were like, oh, yeah, okay, that kind of fits. Because mm. it does seem like an unusual thing to sort of for it to come up with by itself, but maybe mm. for those reasons and if it had heard it, yeah, it kind of go, mm. oh, yeah, okay, that suits. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Mm. Because I felt that it was interesting that it hadn't, like, it was almost like it didn't hadn't thought of itself as I've named myself, but it used it to refer to itself in its own personal mm. logs. It was strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it I seems like a very human kind of uh, 
name like to apply to something like murderbot yeah. that seems very human yeah yeah i thought for a while that it was just what all of the that was like the nickname that all the sec units had mm. i didn't realize for a while and that mm. that was actually this particular unit's name mm. that it was using for itself yeah not like a and for a while i just thought them. oh this is just what all the humans call them you know, the yeah, that's, like, yeah. You it know. makes you think that at the beginning yeah. until you realise that she's actually given, it has actually given itself this mm. name. It's mm. called yeah. name. Oh, it was an interesting character. I, mm. I actually think the thing I most related to is when it was talking about just standing there and just wanting to watch its show right then and there. And it's like, <laughs> uh, I don't really need to pay attention. Can I just switch my show on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's so what it's like when you're at work. Yeah. <laughs> oh like god, that was my whole awesome. week. <laughs> I'm sitting in TV that's about stuff that's not to do with the library, and I'm like, can I just get my phone? <laughs> <laughs> this that this really not relevant to me. <sighs> yeah, when we have a staff meeting, and I'm like, I'm just gonna eat my pizza. Do 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 do. Oh, there's a spot on the wall over there. Oh, but do I really need to listen to this? This has nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> You can talk about something else now. <laughs> Nye doesn't believe me, but um, I really like to, like, crochet through any of those sorts of meetings where the people are just talking at you the whole time. I find I pay much better attention when I can do something with my hands. Mm. And he's like, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, but I'm listening better. <laughs> yeah, I get in trouble for that sometimes. People are like, can you, like, pay attention? I'm like, I am paying attention. Just because yeah, I'm drawing on my notepad doesn't mean I'm. You don't look at people. No, I know. I'm looking at my drawing. But that doesn't mean you're not yeah. absorbing. I'm not paying, I'm not absorbing. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I have the same thing. I, I had to do a, like, it was a mandatory training about code of conduct on Wednesday and I had the worst migraine. And I'm sitting there and they're like, just go home. And I'm like, no, because I know that this mandatory tax training, like if I didn't go to that, it was like a two and a half hour PD. Mm. If I hadn't done that, it would have been hours of work at home doing the like online course and I was like no I'll just, I'll just get through it I'm sitting there like in, it's in this big auditorium and I had like my computer bag on my lap and I was using that as a pillow and just sitting with my head on my in my lap and and I'm like I actually I'm listening I can like I did take it all in of what they were saying mm. I just like couldn't open my eyes or lift my head and eventually I got up halfway through the, the, the talk and threw up and in the bathroom oh, thank God <laughs> And then I was like, I feel a lot better now. Oh, God. <laughs> but I was like really surprised. Like I was surprised that I was able to take as much in when I felt so terrible that I did. But I, I still did actually listen to what they were saying. Yeah, but looking but, at yeah, the quiz that you got at the end, you could have skipped that entire thing. I know. Like the questions on it is so stupid. Like one of the questions, they had to answer these multiple choice questions. One of them was, Somebody, one of your friends asks you to disclose um, private information about a student that you've gained through your work. What do you do? And, like, one of the answers is, you know, tell them that you're not allowed to do that because that's the department's policy. And one of the answers is, like, tell them you'll email them the answers, the, the, the information later. One of the answers is get mad at them for asking you. And I'm like, just... just Common sense would tell you the answer to this. Like, it's, it's not that hard. Why did we need two and a half hours of the anyway? It's okay. Sorry. But, yeah, the point was I could pay attention to things even when I'm not looking yeah. like I'm Although I'm not so sure that Murderbot was actually paying attention. <laughs> no, that's true. She was like, see, I did. I said she. Even she. Don't worry, I'm fighting it constantly. Yeah. <laughs> it was like. Yeah, not caring. And I thought it was really funny that the whole reason why it was able to avoid this program that was going to take it over and, and like, save all the people was because it was like, nah, I can't be bothered reading that shit. I, I've got better things to do. And not oh, download it. I'll, 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 I'll do that update right. later and I'll pick and choose the bits that I want of that update. And yeah. it was like, well, good thing, otherwise... Although no story. Yeah, it did say that it tended to look through it, so it might have found those problems earlier if it had looked. Mm. Mm. But um, I, I think I still, despite all of that, I was sort of like, I, what I like about Murderbot is that 
it still has the laziness that you would expect from a human. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the complacency about the job, and it's like I do the bare minimum to get by. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you go, motorbot. You admit it, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. even if it's just to yourself. So, and 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 the fact that it was going like I I am actually doing a good job, but I like the fact that it was actually able to save all of them because it had been watching all of these shows and had yeah. more than what yeah. its education had taught it. Mm-hmm. Yep, like, I didn't get trained for this, but. I've seen yeah. it on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come up with plans and things. They might not have been brilliant plans, but they were plans, yeah. which was more than what the others seemed to think it could do. So, I just and I, yeah, they they basically um, can um, <clears throat> put them all being saved down to the company being lazy and not doing everything right either. Because yeah. <laughs> otherwise, she would have just that, upgraded. She never would have <laughs> killed anything in the first place. And yeah. that sounded so. That was so it rang so true too. Because I was like, yeah, that's what would really happen. You know, the company's just like, why can I save some money? Be, trying to cut corners, and that totally rang true. I I also really liked how it was like, you know, people would try to draw it in. So it was like it was kind of like that thing of usually in these sort of stories the AI is like wanting to be part of the humans and the humans are rejecting it. Whereas with this it was like the humans were like, come and hang out with us and it was like I'm gonna go stand in the corner until you leave me alone. Yeah, like the corner and she's yeah. like, hang on, this isn't normal. I shouldn't face the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go face the corner. And I liked that it didn't change at the end, like even right at the end after they'd gone through all this and they were like, you can live with us. And it was like, yeah, no. <laughs> On one hand, I'm, like, I'm agree with you. I was like, yeah, 100%. But at the same time, I was like, but I really like this group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, know, yeah. yeah I did. And I'm like, oh, no, she's running away. I'm like, oh, that, that probably makes more sense, though. As much as I'd like her to go with them, it makes more sense that she runs off. No, I was really glad she ran off. Oh, yeah. It ran off. Because yeah. I was just like, yeah. like, what is this? Like, she said, oh, are you my guardian instead of my owner. But really, yeah, it's not a pet. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I, I, that's why I, I was happy for it to run away. But I yeah. enjoyed the characters, and so yeah. I, I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to stay with the characters. I didn't want Murder to Bot to be in those circumstances, though. So mm-hmm. yeah, I yeah. think they so could they be, won't cross paths. In a, yeah, in a, I think yeah. there could be an interesting thing going forward, like where it sends Mensa maybe an update every so often, because that was the yeah. that was the kind of the only relationship I was like, I, I kind of feel it's sad to leave, which it was. Yeah. It was Mensa. Yeah. But as it said, there isn't a place for Mensa. Mensa's got a big family and a farm and there isn't really a need for it there. And I think that's the thing at the end of the day that Murderbot was like, well, this is what I've been designed to do. Mm. So there's part of me that wants to do, you know, needs to find a purpose around that. Mm. Um, that doesn't sound like there's, you know. Because as much as it didn't like its job, it wasn't like it was still there, you know, and mm, still yeah. went into action when it happened. And it said, "I want to, you know, I want to protect my humans. I like this bunch." So, yeah, yeah. And I, but I really enjoyed that. But at the end, it felt very James Bond, Indiana Jones, you know, like at the end, like mm. breaking and finding all the like putting things together and then just becoming a ghost. I really like that, mm. and I loved it how it was talking to the um, to the uh, the the, the um, transport ships. Mm. Um, AI and was like, hey, um, if you let me on board, I'll share all my uh share all <laughs> my <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe like the AIs in this world have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> maybe. Because I was actually really <laughs> worried media. when Murderbot first was freed. I was like, what is Murderbot gonna do? Literally just sit in a room vegging out watching media? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, in reality, yeah, yeah, that's a legit choice you can make. But I'm also sort of like, mm, that's a not really much point to that kind of choice either. Yeah. I think it's wake up call came when it was walking through the um, station and realised it blended in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was the with the old wake up call going. Yeah. yeah. As much as I want my, I wanted my suit, wanted my mech suit, my armour. Yeah, actually, this is interesting because I've never had this before. I've never blended it, and yeah. suddenly I blend in, mm. and I think that's um, 
was really quite exciting. It'll be and exciting there's something, yeah. something to be said for being for disappearing into a crowd. Like if you don't want people mm. to look at you, one of the best things mm. you can do is stand in amongst a crowd, essentially. So, and that's the thing I think Murderbot realised. If I was in my armour, I would have stood out. Yeah, you know, and then I wouldn't want my faceplate. But yeah, I think it was a big wake up call. And yeah, yeah that was really neat. So I I love that, and it'll be interesting to see what adventures Murderbot has next. Mm. I was actually having one thought though. Do you think that its interest in watching media is a, uh, another type of expression of its interest in education? Because quite a few times it refers to its shit education or its need for more education mm. and things. Yeah. Do you think maybe that, that watching of the media is a way of it educating itself about the real world and, and about other human behaviour and mm. yeah. Maybe that's true for everything though. True. I mean look, you know, look at some of like some of the things that are out there. Textbooks aren't that great. You've got some like uh, I was talking about the other day with one of the interviews questions we have for people is how do you keep up with learning in your own time or how do you keep, you know, you know, ingesting stuff and like there's different ways people find and find a way to become engaged and you know like you could go to training or seminars you can go to meetups one of the things that people seem to get obsessed with is business you know like was my colleague who's actually do you read any business books and I actually turned around and I said to him, like I don't read business books because they're shit ass boring mm. and they pad like I've just had CCPG Grey con confirm what I always suspected, which is a business book is like one really good chapter and then it's padded out to make a book, right? It's mm -hmm. basically an They've essay. One good idea. <laughs> one good idea. There's an essay in it, mm -hmm. which I did my dissertation on, but somehow I have to turn this into a book. So I just, yeah, I make it really long winded. And I was like, oh, that's what I've always thought. So then it made sense. And I said this to my colleague, I'm like, if they say podcasts, I'm in because, or if they say they watch YouTube videos, I'm in because diff people have different ways they consume that. For me, it's podcasts. Mm. Mm. I know all about like all the big ideas out there, you know, um, thinking fast and slow, um, some of the stuff um, Malcolm, Malcolm um, Gladwell came out with, all because of podcasts. I haven't had to read any of the books. Mm. It's been great. <laughs> yeah. Other um, people talk about it and you get the information in different ways. It's, exactly. It's, exactly. You're basically using them as your aggregators. Yeah. And then if I had to read the book or a textbook with all that shit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I think, yeah, I think, well, good on Sanctuary Moon for helping explain espionage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I find I educate myself because I have to educate others, which is weird, I know, but... Like I have to. Well, actually, that's one of the best ways. Like, and we do yeah. that in education too. Is mm -hmm. like you get yeah. kids to teach their peers because you have to really understand something to be able to teach it to somebody else. Yeah. And it's it's actually a really good tool yeah. for it's helping last, you make sure you understand something really well. Last stage of learning teach is someone teach someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I I don't get to actually like. It's more like. I don't get to use the method. Like I have to learn out about a different pedagogy or something on those lines mm. and I have to tell teachers about it. But I never get to use them a lot of the time. I'm like, I can see mm. in my head how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but I, don't ha I can't do that when I'm given an hour and a half with some teachers. I don't have time to go and do things that, yeah, mm. all the wonderful stuff that I talk about. And anyway, mm. um, have we got anything else from the book we want to talk about? I thought um, for me... It was a really, I think, and as I mentioned when I, we were doing our quick reviews, I thought it was a great way of showing or uh, paralleling, paralleling how some people aren't socially and neurologically typical um, mm. and maybe an insight into that for some people, like feeling yeah. uncomfortable with, and I, I think that was really good, like um, how, um, you know, yeah, not wanting to, see things on my face or not looking at people like looking someone in the eyes like the where men mm -hmm. had looked just slightly off like i know that is yeah that is definitely a thing for people with um asperger's and people mm. with um uh other types of uh social anxiety is like to be looked at is very makes them very uncomfortable mm. um, it's also a big thing in aboriginal culture as well right. um yeah. like that you you don't look someone who's like if you're a child you don't look at an adult in the eye you don't look at someone who's considered your um 
you know, your elder or your superior. Mm. You don't look them in the eye. And so then a lot of Aboriginal kids have trouble when they go to school because the teachers go, what are, why aren't you looking at, you know, look at me when I'm talking to you. Mm. And right. the fact that they're not looking at you when they're talking to you is actually a gesture of respect. Yeah. But because of that cultural divide, mm. it's not always seen that way. Yeah. But we get that you actually get the same thing in a lot of Asian cultures as well. Yeah. The difference is, is that when Asians, yeah, the difference is a lot of the time when they come to Australia, they train their kids to not do it because they want them to integrate into society. So, mm. Mm. yeah, definitely. I just thought there was some really good parallels there. Um, mm. and, really, I thought that too when I was reading it. Yeah, and I like that because I feel like it gives, you know, in the same way that, um, and I've forgotten his name from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Um, Drax. doesn't Drax, you know, Drax, he yes. doesn't have, he doesn't understand um, cynicism and um, metaphors, metaphors really, and that, that type of thing, you know, like I, I like, and that I, I made, helped a lot of people in um, the autistic and Asperger's communities feel like there's someone who understands me. Like I felt like this was also really good too, in a, in a way in helping others understand that, that kind of like it to look someone in the eye can be too much sometimes mm. Yeah. Um, mm. um and i think that's true like I, i've also had that sometimes where you know when um uh murder bot i think was talking to maybe it was Garantham, and they were in this pilot seats and they were looking out or maybe it was rathke i don't remember who it was but they were like discussing while they were looking out the windshield mm. and i thought that's true like you know sometimes you have that when you're in a car and you're driving and it's really you know yeah. you have some really really great conversations that you know, you have to really think through because you're not having to look someone in the eye. You're both there and you're yeah. close, but it's not, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I thought, I, I thought that was really clever mm. um, and I very much enjoyed mm. that. Yeah. In general, the fact that she fits so many clever bits and pieces into such a short book is just amazing to me. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I was, um, I liked the, the hostile one, <laughs> as they called it. Um, and the birds and the insects and all that kind of stuff. I'm still I'm still a little bit like I thought it seemed very extreme for the um was it called Gracis or Grey Chris? Grey Chris. Very extreme to go around and kill everybody. I don't know. Yeah, that that was a bit like but I felt like it was one of those things where it was just the plot that she put in place so that she could tell the story she wanted to tell. I know. And, I just like um Mm. That's that's Thanks. a fairly common sort of feel for those kind of um, sci-fi dystopian where it's a corporate capitalism, mm. corporate driven world where they essentially are the law. Mm. So yeah. it's it's not about like killing people is not the wrong thing. It's about if I get caught, how much money am I going to have going to have to pay? Yeah, than, yeah. Like, what's the bottom line kind of thing? Mm. Yeah, but like, why were the other group? intent on the killing aspect like why did it have to kill everybody yeah why couldn't they have just set up maps that made it look like these were not interesting areas as opposed to just and deleting them do you know what i mean probably the the whatever it was you know that they might have ended up finding had a greater value than having it actually yeah i think i didn't quite i didn't quite mesh with what the greater value was because the greater value yeah. apparently was there had been intelligent life there and had left remnants Previously, as they yeah. called it behind yeah. which and they is, didn't want that discovered yeah but yeah. i was kind of like yeah. well i think that was because if they find that there's been life on the planet didn't they say they were going to shut down like you can't mine it now yeah they yeah. 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 so lose their yeah, it's really so so whatever the other thing they're doing yeah they and it was really planet. rich yeah yeah, yeah. i just felt like they, they didn't even entertain other ways like why mm. was it why did they not try sabotage and they had to leave because of um their equipment was failing or something yeah. on those again, lines. I, like, I think you're putting too much moral stuff into the kind of world that this is. Yeah. Fair point. I don't value, know, but I think that could have been so far down. equally interesting was a whole, like, that would have made the book longer, Matt, which would have made you happy, is that if we started with some <laughs> sabotage first and that didn't work and they started investigating and then it escalated into murder, yeah. there's your longer yeah, but story. Maybe, maybe the thing is sabotage would have cost more money. Mm. That's mm. a fair point. That might have been the case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they seemed quite happy about everything until they sort of, yeah. I think it just worked out. I think what they were trying. I think what they were trying to do is 
sabotage where they were just going to try and blame it on um, we'll try and make it look like the bots failed. Mm. Yeah. Which is what they were getting at. So it was sabotage or what it kind of came off as sabotage, but in a really bad <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact I, that they yeah. hadn't done, I guess they didn't come across as very smart because they yeah. didn't know who the other groups were, you know, and they didn't know there was a political a political yeah, they didn't even uh, know person on board, which meant yeah. that whether you're like there's a huge bond and um um, yeah, now, now that wasn't the best approach after all. Yeah, but yeah. That to me was one of the most realistic elements of it because I'm like, whoops. People constantly don't do their research before that's they go through these campaigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but but like, yeah. that's, that's it's when they do like know everything. Through. I'm like, how did you find that out? How did you know that? <laughs> that's a through line in the in the the plot though is that. That these companies are always doing the minimum required to get by, yeah, and that includes their research true. too. As does their second unit. The second unit didn't line. know either. Their second unit didn't know. Nobody knew. <laughs> yeah. No, because no one had bothered to put do the research to put that into any kind of data package to say like, oh, by the way, it's like that research would have cost this many dollars per hour or whatever. The- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, yeah. it cost too much. We're just- yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're still there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, not not in quite as deep a um, manner, but uh, I just got a really cinematic sense reading this book as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I kept getting, like, callbacks to various movies, most of them 80s kind of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so specifically the first Predator movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Which I've never seen. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Matt, I don't do scary. scary. I don't this do scary. scary. Yeah. It's an action movie. Um, oh come on! Yeah, um, the effects, the effects are really good. Actually, I was reading up like, yeah, the the invisible effects, very very clever. Mm, yeah, they were. Still, they um, still hold up. Well, a yeah. lot of those older movies they too, and because they it. did them properly rather than just mm. you know. Yeah, it's like how how do we make this actually happen? Um, so yeah, Predator. Um, a little bit of Avatar I felt in there as well and mm-hmm. some of the things with like particularly with the, the wildlife kind of yeah. thing that made me think the about wildlife, like yeah. Jurassic Park. Kind of thing. I kept thinking yeah, I got a Michael Crane. I was thinking Tremors <laughs> yep. when the thing came out of the ground. Yeah. Oh! Actually, <laughs> yeah. I was, that thing, I was that was my theory. <laughs> that was my theory that was wrong. I was, <laughs> I went with June for that actually. I was I, like, yeah. June worms. Yeah, June I went with, um, uh, what's the one? The, the the thing where they f- try to feed them in um, in Jedi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I that had bad. that kind of crater in my head that they were in, and mm-hmm. then yeah, but much much bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a really big um, ant line or something. Yeah. The thing um, that, thing that thing, I told. Sorry. Sorry. No, can I do one more? Yeah, you go. Just because I have one more. Um, <laughs> And now I've forgotten. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if anyone has seen the um, original John Carpenter, The Thing. No. Oh, no. yes. Yeah. Not Mel, no. that's so, for sure. <laughs> no. No, that oh, the thing, thing, is, thing is scary. It's yeah. terrifying. Um, but that, um, that idea, if you don't know, like it, there was a part where I was feeling like maybe the, the sabotage is internal. And it's someone in the team. Mm. And I kept having this, this this feeling of the same thing that you get watching the thing is like you don't know who the alien shapeshifter is. Uh, like, and this one, I was like, oh, who's the bad person? I kept like reading everything going, are they the bad person? Are they right, the bad person? Right. Turned out none of them were bad people. But, you know, so my got, theory that, that was, kind of wrong as well. was to do with the creature from the beginning because I was like they're somehow going to use this mm. creature to kill the other bad murder bots, you know, oh. the second unit robots. I was like, why would you introduce this creature at the beginning if it wasn't going to be important later in the story, right? So I was like, they're going to lure just, just... these other robots, in, these other, other cyborgs, whatever they are, into a spot where they know one of those creatures is and it's going to eat them. And I was like, this would be really cool. And then well, but like, that's why they were there. That wasn't what but that's why they were there in the first place is that the map was wrong. So they... Yeah. The um the uh uh grey Chris, well maybe this is my memory of what it was. They had taken bits of the map and made it wrong and then removed bits of it. And I yeah. understood that they were in that area that they shouldn't have been because the map was wrong, which I think was the sabotage that Grey Chris were trying to do so that right. they would get and then they would leave or they would get like they'd have to go because someone had been killed kind of thing. 
Um, but I think yeah. that was, yeah. it didn't I think quite that work. Was, a byproduct yeah. though because if i remember correctly um Metabot figured out they didn't actually do the maps deliberately it happened yeah they no, caused it was the like problem a, a was a glitch part, just, yeah. yeah oh okay because i thought it was i i maybe misread it i thought the maps were deliberately miscued yeah. because no, they, really they right. also didn't want them going near the remnants yeah no they, they originally thought that was what was wrong but Murderbot figured out later that it was just a byproduct of their hacking that some yeah. things have just gone missing I by think, accident. I think with that part, it may have actually been that they cut out a section of the reports. Like mm, they cut out yeah. the fauna that, like, they didn't mm. think anything was there and they cut out a chunk of, of the report that there was yeah, that's some right. kind of species there so that they didn't know that they might get attacked and they're yeah. off guard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 I was like really disappointed that i thought there'd be more the yeah, i did think that the sandworm hostile one would come back too I, mm. I thought i thought that would come back but it didn't um but yeah definitely i had a cinematic feel but i think i read um i read a q a with the author who said oh you know have you had any approaches about doing a movie you know doing a series or anything like that? she said no, I haven't, but it would be really hard to do because so much time is spent inside Murderbot's head. Murderbot's head. Murderbot's head. Mm. You know, how do you convey that? Um, I thought it'd be a really yeah. good radio serial, like, you know, like a, mm. a podcast. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't business. knock them doing it despite that factor because you look mm. at a movie like um, The Martian, the Martian. Mm. and that was a lot of just being inside his head and a lot of information mm. that really was not interesting yeah. in the movie, and they still managed it. Yeah, but that was also a longer story, though. There was a lot more content. That's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I maybe they might have to wait until yeah. the others. Uh, although so it's funny. probably novellas are generally a good length. It might be a good length for a movie. It's a good though. length for a film. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was the way that yeah. 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 I think it could yeah. be a good. You know how Sherlock is like um, hour and a half, hour and a half mm. for all their series. You know, like you could do something like that where you do long episodes for each book. Mm. Um, well, an hour and a half is movie like these days, not yeah, it? yeah, of course. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, she did say something. I think she said, did she say it, Tavia Spencer, oh, yeah. Mensa, which was pretty cool. She said she had her in her head. I had Christian because, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> of course, that's where I am at the moment. And they all had, you know, slightly Indian names, so mm. that's where yep. my head went. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, amazing in it. Um, I, you know, if if you are someone who's the you know hunts for new movie ideas for the big movie companies and stuff, if you're not reading the tour novella range, you're missing out, in my opinion. Oh yeah, I did hear yeah. about the tour novella range, but it wasn't from the back of this. I reckon because I get their emails occasionally. Sometimes I read them, sometimes I don't. I reckon I saw the novella thing in the emails. Mm. I'm like, oh, cool, and then I for probably forgot about it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have look to be fair. I haven't actually read that many, but I'm he mm. keep hearing about how many wonderful mm. ones have come out from it. So I just realised they've got like a ton of um, free short stories, mm. and there's a, oh, yeah. there's a um, your gaming one in there. Mm. Mm. They've got lots of free stuff out there for you as well. Yeah. And the novellas, um, I tend to end up buying if I'm going to read one because mm. I don't know. I just there's a lot of um, expanse novellas out. I've only read a couple of them. Well, that's because you do the audio books, so they probably don't do them in audio. Not they do, novellas. but they charge oh, they? the same price. Yeah, they do the novellas. They just charge you the same price as the, the novels. And I'm like, I'm not paying yeah. the whole um, Audible credit for a no novella no. that only reads for two hours. I'll get it on Kindle. So I've been reading those on Kindle. The ones that I've read, I've only done yeah. three of them. I'm going to find this. <laughs> I just noticed a bit. I was thinking of reading. Um, did you say I couldn't get a hold of Binti for the BF um, pick? I was thinking about it, but it's of course new, so it's hard to get. Hands on um, I got it on it. Kindle because yeah. I was just like, eh. isn't if, it reasonably cheap on Kindle at the moment too? Um, I find that I find the novellas not that cheap. Like they're usually around about the ten dollar mark anyway. So this wasn't, but oh, wow. um, all systems red was like. Three or four dollars. I was gonna say, I think I paid four dollars. Yeah, yeah, no, all systems red was cheaper. Um, but I think it had been dropped in price. Binti, however, has just had the third in the series released. Yeah, and um, right. I was, I think I got that one cheap because it dropped in price for that. Um, uh, currently so I don't, on Kindle, two dollars eighty four. Binti, there you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, 
Um, and that's a saving of a dollar eighty-five. So that's not. Woo! It could be the newest one. Oh well, uh, that is Kindle, so I'll have to see. What did I buy? Else. It was ten dollars. Maybe it was the newest one in the series. Maybe it was. I could have remembered seeing one going ten dollars for a novella. Seems a bit pricey, especially on Kindle. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm just maybe I'm equating it in my head with looking at the um published like the physical copy. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Mm. Interesting. So on Audible, it's narrated by a male. Oh, there you go. Is it a first person? That's really book? interesting. I wonder if I, that that's why I wanted to say that. I thought that's interesting. I thought you know, I suppose they've got a pick. There's possibly not that very many. Gender neutral, you know, people who identify as gender gender neutral who do mm. audiobook narration. Mm. I, I'd be wonder, I'd be interested to know if the people who listen to the audiobook only mm. read um, it as androgynous or male or female. Mm. I had a look to try and find the review where the person was like, "I totally read this as female, even though I know it's not," and mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. But it was there was a review that I'd seen on Goodreads because I remember thinking. Oh, I'm glad it's not this one. Oh, the next one, next one, it has a dark past, one in which a number of humans were killed, a past that caused to christen itself Murderbot, but it only has vague memories of the massacre that spawned its title and it wants to know more. You know? Oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, and then the next one, does everyone want to hear what that one's about? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so it's the case against the too-big-to-fail Grey Crest Corporation is floundering. Mm. And more importantly, authorities are beginning to ask more questions about where Dr. Mensa's sick unit is. And Murderbot would rather those questions went away for good. Mm. And then the next one's called Exit Strategy and it doesn't have anything about it yet. Oh, there's a fourth. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Well, they all came up. That's what I mean. They all came up on my list. And I was like, well, usually they don't have that many titles. Maybe that's none of them are out. That's you know, like that's why I assumed that it ended that, weirdly because she wrote everything and then she split it up. And then yeah. try to find natural ends yeah, to each of them. Well, most of the, well, from what I understood, most, like I listened to an interview with her with Unreal Podcast and I think my understanding is, is that it, she got asked to write more because it was doing well. And then she was originally set to publish the second one in January, but it was doing so well by that point that they decided to do a, a special print mm -hmm. run, which they weren't going to do. And um, so that pushed it back to May. So I, I'm not, she might have had more in her head, but I don't think they necessarily meant that they were going to publish more from what she was saying. Yeah. Maybe she's just, um, the amount of time it must take between, like, editing mm. and actually getting the out of the mm. book she may have just written within she that time. She may just have so many ideas yeah, going. Yeah, she may just like, have just get it all down on paper. Yeah. She may yeah. just have a lot of drafts, so she's already got the titles and the drafts written out, mm. possibly. Yeah. Oh, that's the other one that I keep hearing people talk about. Um, Sean and Maguire beneath the sugar sky. No, that's the that's not the first one. Um, sorry, I the first one. The Sean and Maguire one's the other one that everybody's been talking about. Binti, this one, and come on, I know you've got it here. Here we go. Every heart a doorway. The author, mm -hmm. the author for Binti. Did you yeah. guys has the group read something from them before? Yes, no, yes, yeah. Is death. yeah, that's what oh, I said. That's I don't think that's I what's, that. put, that's what's but, putting me off reading this one is like because that was so dark, and I'm like, Yeah, so what was Ooh. the first one called again? Um, is death. Oh, sorry, Binti. Binti. No, no, what's the first? What was the one that the, the author wrote? What do you mean? Sufi's death. Was it called Sufi's death? Who, who, who fears, fears death. death? Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, we're talking too fast. Yeah, I was like, well, what's going on here? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I looked at this one and decided not to. The Who's Fears Death one, though, had a reputation on. for being full on, whereas I haven't heard that so much. Like, Vinti is supposed to be strong. I, I don't want to say confronting because that sounds too much, but, like, it, it's supposed to be strong because she's that kind of author. But I, I don't believe it's quite so confronting as Who's Fears Death is i don't know i'm going to be reading it anyway so i'll let you guys know yeah i think i read this and went there's no way i'm reading this book mm. no who fears death oh yeah yeah no i, I kind of like, wish i hadn't yeah, <laughs> yeah. me too yeah me i was looking i was like there's no way i'm reading this book it, it was one of those books where i was like i can objectively see that the writing is really really good mm. i just really didn't enjoy reading it because it was yeah. so horrible and yeah like, that's and that's yeah. the kind of reason like i still haven't watched the handmaid's tale because I know it's 
amazing, but I know I'm not going to cope very well. There's a lot of things that I do that with where I just yeah. go. Yeah. I read the book of The Handmaid's Tale and that was before I had kids and I could not handle it now. Yeah, I watched, well, that's why I think I, I, I want to see it, but I think I'm just, I, yeah, yeah it's just I a watched, struggle. I watched half of it and I watched it very slowly, like little bits at a time. Mm. And then I was just like, I can't do it anymore. It's just too much. I went and looked up online what found happened because I was just like, I can't watch this anymore. Too much. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, there's a couple of things like that where I just go, it's like, medicine you know or surgery you know it's good for you but at the same time it's just shit to go through <laughs> yeah that's why i don't want to watch the next season of the fall because we were watching the fall and i loved like you know x-files fan from way back i love Gillian anderson and i i get, like she's brilliant in it and it's a really well written show and and i'm like but it's just is that the one where she's like finding serial killers or something yeah yes yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard it's really good, but really dark. Yeah. Um, did you guys watch um, that Netflix one? Um, Alias Grace. Of, sorry? Oh, sorry. I, was just, I thought it might have been Alias Grace. No, Mastermind or Master... Uh, oh, no, Mindhunter. Mindhunter. Did you guys watch that, the first season of that? I, I read the book that the guy wrote back in the 90s. Oh, so you've read the book. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it's on my list, but I haven't. Seen yeah, it. it's I really enjoyed it, um, and it's more. I don't know. It's it's just um, it's interesting as opposed to being terrifying, if that makes sense. So um, you know, plus it's Jonathan Groff and the guy, other guy who I, I didn't know of before, but probably had seen him in lots of stuff. He's really good as well. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I figured out where I got my ten dollar pricing from. Where mm -hmm. the second book in the Murderbot series is on Kindle for ten dollars. Oh. Is it already out? No, no, no. It's pre order. Oh. Yeah, no, I see. What it's you mean. it's a it's a full novel though. That one, right? I believe, if I remember correctly, I think I looked up how many pages it was, and it had the exact number of pages. Yeah, because I thought that was just a group of short, like shorter novellas. Yeah. You know. I think I looked it up and this one was oh, 144 right. okay. pages okay. published yeah. and the second one was exactly 144 pages and that's why it stuck in my head because they were exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. See, that makes me think. Yeah. Oh. Maybe they'll, after I mean, while, I'll probably I'll pay it because I'm a sucker. Yeah, I'll probably pay it because <laughs> I really want to read it. So. Yeah. And I have a lot of my two read lists. I could leave it for a while and see if it's done. Mm. Yeah, that's why, I was go that's why I went. That's why I found it because I was like, oh, I'll go pre-order this because I definitely want to read the second one. And then I looked and I was like, oh, for $10. And, I was, and now I'm like, yeah, I, I don't need to pre-order it. I can just go buy it. I can just download it when I'm stuff. ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so maybe when the third one comes out, the second one will be cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. Um, I was going to say, what, are we, we, what was the last thing we read that we enjoyed? What was the last one that we read? Oh. Oh, sorry, that I was in. Um, it was a second in the series. It was a long. Oh, close and common orbit. Yeah. When's the third one coming out for that? Oh, yeah. Good question. Oh, good question. <laughs> yeah, I've got it on my to read list already, but it's, I don't know when it's published. Is it I haven't just me, it. or did you guys get similar sorts of feels from this one with that book? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's just Maybe that's another went... reason why that character both seemed female to me. Like, it was... yeah so many yeah. characters that reminded me of that character. It, it just seemed to me like her choice at the end was just the opposite choice of what, um, I can't remember, Lovely. 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 Yeah, yeah. Lovely. She, she called herself something else. Um, yeah, she called herself yeah. something else. I can't think of what it is, though. The, the new Lovey um, yes. yeah, made a different, made the opposite choice to stay with these people and, and be helped and be guided, whereas... <laughs> um, Looks like Kim's back in in his second time. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I, I accidentally logged myself out. Um, well, it's really I weird. There's two of you players yeah, being a pain in the butt. <laughs> weird. Uh, I'd eject your other one, but I'm scared that that might eject you as well, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> when that happens, the, the second one does eventually just go away. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, so I, I was just thinking, like, I, when I was reading it, I was like, it's almost like that character went, the different the two different paths mm. and and mm. i thought that was quite yeah. an interesting i think it's also because of if you think about 
the background of the like the difference in yeah one of the one of them was born into being with other human being with humans didn't know any different like essentially not lovelace but i can't remember the character you know, yeah never known anything really because it was a, it was a uh, yeah it was brand new yeah whereas yeah. this one has a lot of background it's been brought you know it's been born to this world to do one thing the yeah. one thing that yeah. kind of annoyed me well, it doesn't annoy me i just always question it and i wondered matt if you felt the same way because ever since we saw interstellar and we saw what the ai are like in that the or the robots are like in that i always question very much now why they make humanistic robots you know uh, why this is still a, a trope um it could be a logistic thing like if you're I suppose. No, I don't know. I just—it's just one of those things. Of, I'm like, just thinking, you know, you can easily fit into human spaces if you're mm. a, around mm -hmm. about a human, human shape and size. Yeah, and like generally, but, evolutionary, it's considered that we would become the apex of the pyramid or whatever because mm. we have evolutionary the correct form for it. If that makes sense. Mm. By the oh, way, yeah. the book comes out on the 26th of July. Okay. This is uh, the Close Common Orbit sequel? Numbers. Yeah. yeah, it's called Record of a Space-Born Few. Oh, cool. I, I don't know what it is. It is um, it's the movie with Robin Williams. What is the one where he's a robot oh, there? Bicentennial Man. Um, Bicentennial, Bicentennial Man. Yeah. Um, and they bring up a, the, um, I don't know if it's that or something I heard around that, that um, the reason they make the robots look like humans is because we treat them better. Yeah, like we, we don't just abuse the crap out of them and, and do I don't know. I think I, a, it's, I, a, it's a theory. It is a theory. I, I think it's a it's a it is just that it's a theory mm -hmm. because um, look, we've had a humans have had a grand tradition of slavery and treating each other badly even right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, Especially for for a unit that is supposed to be security or weapons or mm. you know that type of thing. That's why when I watched um, Babel, not Babylon Five, <sighs> Battlestar Galactica, the war bots that you know, like they were the ones that were humanistic looking because they were trying to infiltrate humans and listen in and everything. And then there were the war ones, the toasters that looked like something out of Star Wars. I kind of thought that was much more realistic. See, I I like... it, all, it still all comes down to psychology, though. Like, yeah, yeah. If you want someone to, for whatever reason, mm. to think of something more human-like and inter treat it more human-like, whether that's yeah. treating it badly or otherwise, yeah, um, there may be some advantages to making it appear human over mm. something that's more utilitarian and mm. less seen as a peer and more as a tool. Mm. There may be some Especially very different because, psychological reasons for that. Yeah, I, I think they were supposed to be security robots. They're not like mercenaries, killers. They're actually supposed to be working in security. So they're working closely with humans that are supposed to be on their side. So they don't yeah. want those humans to be terrified of them all the time, basically. No, but at the same they time, they want that. You know, the bot said at the beginning, before, like yeah, they yeah. looked, they like the team looked at it differently. Like it never. They were aware. always knew it was different. But like, like even didn't even ride in the chopper until afterwards, you know. But half of them still kind of thought of it as a person anyway, like from the get-go. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, I think like if you look at the robots in Interstellar and things like that, it's sort of you can see where there's different forms and functions that could be quite useful. But like mm -hmm. when you look at that environment, they very much treated those robots as tools. Cool. Tools. Mm. They still speak Even, to them and say, oh, you know, turn your cycle around down with or whatever. Them, yeah. But still, like, you know, fuck off and sacrifice yourself to do. Oh, absolutely. Blah, blah. Absolutely. And that's but what it makes like. that. And that's an easier, I think, that would make yeah. it easier when it is a Leatherman and not mm. a person. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I really, I'm, I've, I would like to reread Matt Ruff's um, Gas Sur Electric, which I think I. Bought as a secret Santa for someone who's not here. So there you go. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they, <laughs> they chose it. Because um, I was like, oh, they had Matt Ruff on their list. <laughs> I'm buying that. Um, but because I felt kind of disappointed with uh, my memories of um, the Windbearer, what's it called? 
the 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 full, not the yeah, fall, fall on the hill. I was full of the windbearer because that fall on the hill was struck me as a strange. I was going to say because you brought me full of the fall on the hill. Yeah, yeah. And I always like. I think it's because you know it's a first novel, and Matt Ruff has always said, you know, like it's my first novel. It wasn't perfect. I look back at it and I go, hey, it's not perfect. And you know, no novel's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Mind. And you know, and I think it's because I had such fond memories of it being like nineteen, twenty, rereading it, and then I'm like forty, reading it and going, okay, it's dated. And that's why <laughs> when I, which is why I do not reread David Innings. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's why I was like wanted to read. Because once I read that, I was I wanted to read everything he had, but he only released Gasser Electric, the only the next thing. And I've read pretty much everything that he's done since then, like Bad Monkeys and a couple of other things. Um, but um, the in Gasser Electric, there are servant bots, and it's a very interesting commentary because they are all made to look black, because it's his commentary. Oh. It's his commentary on. Uh, humans and what they're comfortable with and it was a talk about how they were always there were lots of different bots and lots of different nationalities but the one that seemed to be popular and kept getting ordered was the black one and he was also making a comment at the time because he wrote that back in the 90s about what's called the token black in movies um i don't uh, have you heard of it have you guys heard of that term yes there's even a yeah. character South in Park South Park called character called token, token. Yeah, yeah, which and that was his commentary on that was to say, you know, we, it's like, oh well, we need to have a, a black, you know, a black character amongst all these white folks, which would, you know, let's be honest, not happen, um, you know. Uh, and it was kind of like, yeah, it was on that. And I do remember reading that and thinking, oh, that's that's really interesting. And then I think I made you all listen to that podcast on imaginary worlds where they talked about whether we're going to treat AI yeah. nicely or not, and we won't. We'll treat them. Which is true. <laughs> Already, we don't treat them well. We, you know, it's where it's funny because thank you to Siri. I'd say that too, but I also swear at Siri and say, "Fuck <laughs> yeah. hey, that." If you do that equally with other people, then you're not treating the AI badly. You're just treating them uh, the same way. Yeah, I don't know. I think that this is I think, and I think that until AI has more personality, that um, yeah. I think that's the difference. We talked about it um, in the AI chat, which is there's artificial intelligence and then there's sentient intelligence mm. and there's a yeah. difference. Yeah. And yeah. it's that case of where does it make a, and I think didn't we read about that in A Close and Common Orbit where um, she yes, was having a conversation. The AIs that she was trying to talk to and they just weren't interested in what she was interested in. Yeah, mm. yeah, and they were like, this is my job. I'm actually fine with it. You know, <laughs> it was sort of, yeah, it was really interesting. Like, I think it was an AI that was like running, running the ticket booth or something. And it was really interesting. Yeah. What um, I found interesting about that though, is that like, I, can't, I wish I could remember her name because I want to compare her to Lovey. Mm. Um, but um, that like Lovey 2 versus Lovey. Let's just do that. Um, Lovey 2. <laughs> almost I was just about to. Lovey Two seemed to have um, um, more personality to me. Personality to me that even Lovey did. Lovey still seemed rather more on the AI rather than the sentient to me. Yeah, and uh, that's possibly because we spent more time with Lovey Two than we did with Lovey. But at the same time, I was like, how was it then with rebooting? If it was there for both of them, it would it just reappeared still, despite the fact that other AIs clearly don't have this. Like, how did that until um? Sentience travel. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sidra. Sidra. Thank you. Everyone's yeah, I would never that. Yeah. It's not as memorable a name as Lovey. I think yeah. it's a nice name. Lovely, lovey sort of fit together, and you sort of you kind of got stuck on it. Whereas Sidra, mm. I love it as a name, but it it didn't sit in your head the same way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's also because Jinx was, you know, we spent a lot of time with Jinx. Yeah, and 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 even before we got that book, like the, this blurb of the book talks about Lovey. It doesn't talk about Sidra. Yeah, it doesn't talk about Sidra, mm. which I think is a mistake in some ways. Like, mm. but at the same time, I suppose it's a reveal of what the name is. Yeah, yeah. and I thought it was assuming that yeah. we've read the previous one. And, yeah, yeah. We, and the same thing with the second one and read the back and go, oh, this one's about Lovey. Cool, I'll read this one. Yeah, you know. 
Yeah. Whereas the next one, from what I can tell, the third one's not going to have any of these characters in it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's set in the universe, which will be interesting. And that's the oh, thing. I thought, she's, I thought the third one was bringing back the crew from the yeah, first. Yeah, so did I. No, it's it's going to one of the human spaceporty things. So it's going to one of the human um, floating around ship things, from what I understand. Okay. Um, but it, to me, it doesn't matter. She's that kind of author. I will read it anyway, and I'll yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I'm not actually someone who tends to do that, though. Like, even when it's an author I like, I'm like, I'm still sceptical when I read it. The fact that I'm willing to read this, I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm actually okay with it. I, I, like, I like it when there's such great world building that you can be in that universe and that world and meet other characters and explore it. Um, yeah. I wish more media, more creators did that and didn't, didn't get so hung up on. All we need to know what happens with the characters as opposed to this is the world that I've created, this is the magic system I've created, I'm going to explore. Yeah. This know, is why, yeah. yeah. And this I think be with Anne Lecky as well because she's done the similar sort of thing. She wrote her trilogy, which is about those her character, mm -hmm. and now she's gone and written another book in the same world, but it's nothing to do with that character whatsoever. See, that oh, sounds I didn't, really interesting. I didn't know, the new one was in the I know that because I hadn't finished the third one yet because I found the second no, one for so long. Um, and um, but I would like to know more. Like I would like to know more about like because um, they don't they don't have any type of um, faster than light travel or anything like that or faster than um, like all travel. I think from what I understood. Speed and, or yeah, it's at speed. Or, yeah, right. so that's why there's so many clones of the um, em emperor or empress or imperial or whatever it is. But I well, that's that might disappoint you then because it's not it's while well, it's set in that world, it's not set in that culture even. That's okay. There are lots of different cultures. It was really yeah. interesting. So it, it's it's off into one of the other cultures. So she said she gets out of the whole um, androgynous. Um, everybody's a she. So. No, that's that's okay. I mean, there were other there were definitely other kind of interesting cultures. Um, and I thought she yeah. did a pretty good job of exploring that culture anyway because yeah. having having a character who was not was part of that culture but also wasn't of that culture meant yeah. that there was a lot of exploration of that culture anyway. Yeah. yeah. said culture so many times. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I'm so cultured. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's a really smart decision for her to do that. Like she's obviously yeah. set up a world that's really big yeah. in her head. Well, that's why I'm excited about reading um, the uh, cowboy or oh. Wild West one from Brandon Sanderson's uh, Mistborn World. Yeah. You know, set hundreds of years later. And I'm excited about, like, because, and I think we talked about doing it at some point. So, yeah. I think I'm really saving, my, the, saving myself for that. Yeah. I've got the first three. I'm really just waiting for the fourth one to come out. And then I'm right. Like, I'll probably start reading it. In that world, because there's yeah. four novellas. Is that right? Yeah, because there was he originally it was going to be a trilogy, and then last year he released the second one, and then a month later he let, released the third one, and everyone was like, "What's this?" <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, I got four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then that sounds like a good time for us to like pick it up then and do it then when the fourth one comes out. Yeah, and then we just yeah. go boom. We're back in the Mistborn world. Do I need to have read other Mistborn? You need to friggin' read Mistborn. You like... wouldn't enjoy it, Matt. I've told him that he never listens to me. So did you finally read, did you finally read the Lies of Carrie Rock series? Read Mistborn series. Read Ancillary Justice. And, well, did you? <laughs> yeah. You did, did you read Ancillary read Justice? No, not yet. <laughs> you would I've definitely, got, which, I know we've said it to a million times, but you would read. so enjoy Ancillary Justice. It's all this AI. Seven Expanse books Matt, skip the Expanse books. It's fine. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. There's a TV That's show. That's the one I most want to read. That's the one I most want to read. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it sitting here in physical form, Mel, as mm. you well know. I know. Mm. I gave you one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, I think the reason I'm sort of like that is because, yeah, there is a TV show and I know you're going to watch it, so just read yeah. the other books. <laughs> well, I, I've watched the show. Oh, yeah, and because last time I tuned in I hadn't finished the show. We've finished the show now. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it wasn't an alien. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, that whole oh, bit yeah. at the end, I'm like, it seems to be just too curious. Anyway, it's, it was... it's really hard to talk about it actually when you know what's going on because of the books, and you're just like, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't mention the spoilers. Oh, no. oh yeah. 
Tell me about it. I'm on book seven. I'm I know. Right. You know, we're a little lot further ahead. I know. Yeah. yeah. And book seven. Actually, is that's yeah. one of my goals. I have to, by my birthday this year, I have to finish the third book. You do. Seriously. You really do. Yeah. Um, so the book that I just started reading, which is the one that come, came out most recently, is set like... 20 years, you said? A, it's about 20 years after the previous one. What? Like, yeah. Like, there was this big jump in time and they explained it by... Stuff that I can't tell you without spoilers, but oh, shush, 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 shush. I don't even want to know that much stuff. Oh, but no. I was like, I was just oh, like, no, I don't like it when why are you doing this? I don't like when that happens because I get like that's what happened in the Thursday next novels. Yeah, jump, and then I just was like, okay, like you, like you literally jumped the shark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Still waiting for that Shades of Grey like, number two, Jasper. I really enjoyed that book too. And I was which one? That, there was one called Shades of Grey. Of Shades of Grey. Which was in this like post some kind of disaster world and all the people can only see in, in black and white but then particular people can see certain colours. So you might be a red and colors, you only yeah. see red and you might and be so a blue. So it's like the societal caste system based on what colours you can see. The colours that you can see. And they can't, really? their night vision is pretty much non-existent. So like they right. never go out at night because they can't see at all. Like Right. And um, there's this whole system of like for a red, you can't like marry someone who's a green, uh, what was it? It's it's marry. the way the rainbow works. Like Yeah, but it was something along the lines of like you couldn't marry like a red couldn't marry a green because you'll end up with like this blue brown colour. Like red green colour blindness. Like oh how they mix. That's oh. right. Oh. Guys, if we're st- finished talking about the book, I'm just gonna turn off the broadcast. So Yeah, I think okay. so. Fair yeah. Uh, look, it was great. Go read it. Yes, yes, read it. What the fuck did you get out there? My library even had and a it's copy. Not, it's and it's not a big commitment either. I'm really no, sure. No, I, 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 can, I can attest to that. Great sci-fi. It's great AI. There's all the stuff this, this book club loves. Yeah. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.